Yeah, and I definitely want to take a look at the draft for both of them starting out. Uh, when you look at their champ pools, both have pretty huge champ pools, which you really like to see. There's a slight tendency for perks, you could say, for some more melee matchups compared to Jensen. But otherwise, they both seem to have pretty wide counter picks. Uh, so I wanted to go a bit deeper and look in the actual draft situations and how they're getting to these champions, because they're actually very different in this regard. Uh, Jensen has blind picked over the course of the regular season way more often than perks. He also has way more phase one picks, meaning before the second rounds of bans come in. So when I'm looking at these two, even though I favored perks, I do want to talk about Jensen and his performance recently, especially in their last best of five. I think he performed insanely well. Obviously, the big thing with Fudge is how much he's improved over the entire split. Three, two, Emily Raz, you taking notes? Yeah, and I'm going to copy your homework. Three, two, Team Liquid as well. <laughs> uh, for literally, you've just hit every point. You know what, Mark? Just go ahead. Mark? <laughs> what? How am I the only person of the four people today to predict to, uh, C9 3 2? I mean, they were, it was a five game series in lock in when Fudge was getting slammed and Perks was, you know, still a great player, but was not coordinating well with the team quite yet. Mm -hmm. you know, the one you're referring to, this nerf on Urgot on 11.6, is a big tell when they're nerfing the, you know, on hit uh, modifier as well as looking at the type. All right, so as the draft is locked in, Seraphine was a flex for a while, could be support, could be bot lane farm, could be mid as the R gets locked in. We're not sure. Then Ezreal comes in as well. It is support Seraphine here for Core JJ. Might be hard to find the engage. Santorin's here, gonna be jumped on. Perks is forced to flash as he was on cooldown. Nice to by Santorin, trades Ghost for Flash. Perks should not be six in time. Get the big stun, get the combo off. Here he goes, pops it, gets the stun. Big damage in from Blabber. Can they deny level six? Yes, they can. That is how you coordinate a top dive, but be careful, because Santorin's back, but he pulls in Blabber, not Fudge. He auto-attacked the wrong champion. Cloud9 can transition some of their focus. Meanwhile, though, Santorin six. wants Perks. Can he find the way out? Gets to steal the Hecarim ult. He gets Dove anyway, and it's gonna just be enough, and he gets the trade kill. Perks making the best of a bad situation, turning one around. Benson, he's gonna greet for the turret play. Blabber, flash auto, red buff should be enough. He's gonna walk at the poor guy. The flash, Blabber, aim it well, <laughs> aim it well. Nice sidestep by Jensen. Blabber's gonna jump in, that's a bit too much. Alistair, Hex Flash, almost in range, headbutt pulverize, but right there, Santorin's in. Can he turn it around? So far, no, as Vulcan took the turret. Blabber next, and Perch has W back up. There is no play for Santorin. The counter gank means nothing. He won, though. Can't Ben. Cleanses, gonna look for the slow, look for the ulti. Eventually wants to flash a reaction to the ultimate, and it's gonna be aimed oh. well! Beautifully oh, done. Oh, again. Alfari has ulti, so you cannot get below one third, or you die to the ultimate unless you kill him in time. So there's the dive, there's the stun, <laughs> there is absolutely. We can get here, but right now we're just Infinity War, and I mean, right now it's another kill to the top side. Alfari, the ult's not gonna matter. Perks brings it to him instead. Outer done. Um, they do have some setup on Dragon. Here we go. Fear comes across. Blabber gonna find himself a single root in the stun as well. Santorin cannot survive. And Fudge Stride breaks four. Gets a single stun. Charm hits only one champion. And the tower dive comes in for Cloud9. Two percent. Let me get a pick or navigate around. Fudge can just like steal the Gromp. And honestly, okay, yeah, gets a smite. But Santorin. This is not it. <laughs> by this waiting is not for it, it. Gets headbutt pulled. Javelin, he's ignited. Hey, look, Perks is here. Thanks for the kill, buddy. I've got the ult for later. <laughs> All right, ours on the runaway. Nice. Yeah, get out. Has to be respectful. No smite available on TL. Vulcan over the wall. It's actually the entire squad going in for the play. Fudge getting a bit low. You cannot stride breaker walls. I am 99% certain. So Fudge is going to lose his life, but oh, smited to one HP. Yes, here we go. Will there be a bit of a dive? Perks is going to be rooted. Is there a turn? Not onto him, though. Mid under fire. Charm does not matter on Alistair. Ult's in. Headbutt pull comes across. The fear. They're going to try to knock down the horse and they will pick him up. The charm, the root, a lot of damage coming across. Jensen is out. Uh, he's going to have to Ooh. use all three ult charges and still might die. Headbutt pull gets the auto attack stun as well. Perk steals Ariel just to make sure he can't get away. I'm not sure that Zonia's means anything. It's a two minute cooldown, which is probably longer than you need. And that's going to be this tower taking a beating. Team Liquid have to make the last stand now. Charm gonna land, saves, cleanse, headbutt, pull, hits three, no re-engage, uh-oh. Nice pullback there, saving Alistair away from Alfari's engage. And now the re-engage could be enough. Alfari does knock down Vulcan in the end and stays alive. Hecarim dive into the Ooh. back, Blabber can't get enough either. A pair of shutdowns go over and Team Liquid losing only a turret. Yeah. While you're hitting the dragon, we can try, yeah, but Centaurin's getting bullied off. This rend is free. And now with Elder Dragon on, TL took too long to choose to fight.
The charm might land, but the one from Jensen won't, and it's not gonna matter. Volk to the back line. Double kill already for Perks. Ven's gonna throw an Alistair for a bit more. Easy Dive comes across, already four kills. How far he left alone, he's gonna drop as well. The Bud Light A's for Cloud9, not a problem. 15,000 gold in a game, one win goes the way the underdogs you might consider as Cloud9 will take down Team Liquid the first. Cloud9 heard you were talking about early games, so they slammed down Redected, Nidalee, Callista, Alistar, and they steamroll that early game. Yeah, uh, Jinx, or if you want more lane pressure, could go for Ash as well and have crazy engaged. Uh, you know, Rel, Silas, uh, and uh, Scion there would be a very, very good all-in team but they go right back to the Callista. Level two combo comes in. Summoner heal burned early for move speed. Is there enough to kill Tactical? A few autos come in and now Whoa. with the mid lane blabbers here. Jensen's already flash. Is it enough for a pounce of flash Q? Not gonna be the case just yet, but he's Stare! right in front of Santorin. Oh! Perks is looking for it. Flash crash down, not gonna land, but the other half's going to, and that's gonna be the full combo. <laughs> Three v one, Jensen, I'm sorry. Here's your Nidalee freak that you're asking for. Fudge gets it, the ultimate in onto Alfari, and Blabber's there. He's a bit low, 300 HP, puts the ulti down. Does he have enough damage to kill Fudge? Not with a javelin landing right there. Alfari saves summoners, did not burn Flash to dodge, and clean a Divine Sunder. He's on his way to the second item. Perk's gonna try for a bit of a steal, not gonna get this one. Is there a re-engage though, 3v3? Okay, trade of Hecker, most double fear on the one side. Charm coming across, not gonna hit much there either. Zeno buys a bit of time. Everfrost not gonna land. Vulcan getting dangerously low and has no way out. And so the kill goes through. Santorin is 2-0. Oh. Gonna stack up here. Clever coming down through the river. Looks like a four on okay. five. Kill Perch TP is joining in now. Big stun on the front side, but Core JJ could be the target. Jensen low, but Hecarim fears four. Charm on a three as well. Knockup's not going to be a kill, and it's time for the healing to come on in. So guess what? Cloud9 do not have the stats to fight. A fudge flash will buy some time. The dragon's going to spawn, but Centaurin will always chase him down. The flash me Fudge runs through one of the wards, see if they can get to him. Perks has to flash oh. away, gets a bit of a health, and it's not going to be enough. Alfari solo kills the Cloud9 mid laner. And it's time to do a little bit more now as Fudge is left alone. One versus four, now five. Who's going to get the kill credit? So you can find your engages, find your transitions, and he's going for Perks. All right, finds the charge. A bit of a knockback and a slow ulti pretty soon if they need it. They don't, though, so a killing spree now for Tat to go through time for another turret to be knocked down. The mid inhibitor is already dead. Top inhibitor probably opened up. Centaurin going to be CC'd for the turret, but that one's going to drop now. And Sven going to be the target, going to be charged at. Just barely stays alive with the shield bow, only so big. A killing spree for Alfari. A charm onto the rest of the team. It's time for the cleanup, baby. Everybody's going down. Just Blabber left alive as Fudge's ghost drops as well. Cloud9 may have stomped Teal in game one but Team Liquid are looking at a 24-minute victory in game two. They got somewhere to be, apparently, and it's game three with the lead here as they're going to knock down the turrets. Next is itself, KDA is not going to be stacked up either, but 24-04, the Nexus will fall. Team Liquid slaughter Cloud9 in game two. You're playing solo queue, so, you know, there's <laughs> always a bias it's there. A... Don't get me wrong, right? There's always a bias there. You can't you can't grab everything perfectly, but Volibear coming back in as well. And we'll reiterate what we saw in the Dignitas series last weekend. This is for their junglers as well. Jensen actually doesn't. First can get flash root in a knockback is easy. Jensen's gonna get a heal, he's gonna dash, he's gonna flash, is it gonna be enough? Oh, the turret's gonna trade it back. So at least a kill comes back on back here. Jensen. Even with 4JJ coming. And oh my gone. god, they get a flash him. hook. They know they've got it. What Ooh. a shot by Jensen sets up the kill as the follow through is there lands any skill shots off Alfari's stun. It's pretty much Doom. Flash E, gonna land for more, but a Hecarim is gonna be there to turn it back around. Whoa. Charge in though, and Jensen does it better. Sweeper on the entire way, knows he's not been spotted. There's missing pings in the side, but that's gonna be enough to find Tactical. For anything else, they're finally here waiting for Thresh to show up. Hecarim ult goes nowhere. He, he uh, melee range to try to CC Vulcan, and now this man is dead of the 1v3. Right. But Sven has to charge away. Turret will not die a greatly timed ult by Alfari, pushed back, but Santorin flashes in. Oh, to be hooked right into his face, rooted now as well. Oh! Kill. Sven is excited, and that means big damage is afoot. Rocket already down. Cloud9, though, they they have the power, right? Uh, Jinx here is ready. Actually, Realm Warp used by perks that go for the pick. And they're all five here. Jensen flashes over just to see perks in his face. Root into root into root into death. Sven. Pretty soon. 
2500 Alfaro still winning. He's on Ward. Sven gonna slow him down. Here comes the pull to the front line. Corey today not as easily saved. And now has to run away. Dive in the back line is in. And is it gonna be enough damage? They try to knock down Sven. And he's surviving. Finally goes down the tactical. But that means he has to overextend. And Cloud9, they've still got perks. Oh, baby, it's a quadra kill for the mid laner. And just like we saw a year and a half ago, Perks has taken down Team Liquid in a best of five. Fire orb right there either. Which and is Perks, dangerous this, because... This is it. The, yeah, that's the kind of play. That's the stun. And the controller comes down to have a TP. A double root comes Ooh. in. Perks, does he kill them both? He kills one and a thousand gold shutdown. And here that comes damage. the engage. 5,000 on Baron. Good choppers, but Alfari's on the flank, and Blabber's still on the Baron. Here comes the dive. He stuns up Perks, but he takes so much damage that he's going to drop one for zero. And Sven is safe on the back line. This fight is already over. It's two, it's a third, it's a fourth, and it's time for the fifth. There's the kill, a quadra for Sven of Bud Light Ace and the TP to mid lane. Fudge going to push down a Nexus, as actually it's the entire squad doing it. It's the Realm Warp. It's time to end the game. It definitely is. C9 successfully do it. They get flanked by Alfari, but the damage out of Sven and Perks just melts them. And there's no way there's any comeback there for Team Liquid. C9 improved to 2-1 and one in the series. Big, big answer for them. They picked the late game composition, the Jinx and the Rise. Despite all the effort on Perks, mid lane was a bit of a kingdom. A nice hook, perfectly timed, a stopwatch to buy a few more seconds, an extra ace for good measure, a ninth kill for Sven. And Cloud9 are on match point. And honestly, we haven't really seen TL play around topside yet this series. Can, can do just fine into it. And the Braum pickup, last pick yeah. here for Cloud9. Uh, able to block off a lot of what Jinx tries to do. Ooh, Jens oh, Jensen? Oh, this is a little bit of danger. I mean, Tom Kench is here, but with Ash slows the dash in. I mean, Jensen's landing phase is so doomed now. He's at 200 health, and he's got a flash. Perks on the flash chase. It's an early first blood. It's 120. Oh, oh, <laughs> Meanwhile, is going down as well. We got kills everywhere. We got a spicy game four. First blood saves lives. It, it, oh, oh, no, it's 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 he's actually just dead. Jeez, what a game. Yo, a Scion Zombie is not to be trifled with, my friend. Fudge given. Fun fact, the wards actually have a visual transformation uh, if they last long enough. I think it's like, what, 10 minutes? Bigger gap than it is. Uh, Blabber coming down for Core JJ, though. Could be a target. No dashes yet for perks, but Alfari, yeah, the flash follow. Is it going to be enough? It's not going to be enough. Alfari, is he dead to the <laughs> turret? One auto, Blabber flash cues. Gets that one in. Nice kill picked up by Cloud9. You know what that is, Freak? Sinult's gonna land. A lot of health can go to Alfari, though, and he's gonna pop it right now, plus 200. And now is it gonna be enough for the rest of it, though, as Blabber comes back in for a of the javelin and a shot. And there's just no way out. He never runs backwards. Never... Jack, gotta be happy in this one as Cloud9 leading the series. And three to one may just be the kill score, and no longer three to two. Let's see if it's gonna be enough, though, because guess what? Blabber has arrived, and Zetron's gonna come back around. 200 HP. Cyanol comes in, big CC, a spike, <laughs> but Santor just has to die for his top later. Why even walk in? Oh, it's a tragedy. That was going to be a 3v1. He's still going to come on down. Blabber's nearby. Blue Smite slows him down. Tongue Lash going to land. Santor oh. flashes. Ult's going to slow him down, though, and Perks is uncatchable. Shockwave, not going to land either. And the arrow hits the flashless core JJ. <laughs> He's the death after all. Kobe, you got it right. And now the re-engage looks good, though. A heal keeps Fudge alive. The last rocket kills him. Has get excited, doesn't matter, because Tactical is already dead. Oh. It's a two for one fight. Jensen very, very low. A stun from Alfari, not gonna mean enough. Stun as he dashed away, though. Oh, can get a lot done. Arrow flying across. There, there's a core JJ right here. Tactical, yeah, says, you're <laughs> dead. You know what? It's not gonna matter. To try and keep vision, if if you toggle the vision to Team Liquid's viewpoint right now, oh, they're it's losing dangerous. It. All right, a pick up on the one. Core JJ spits out, go back to safety, but Centaurin. Doesn't have the same luxury, dies right away. The cooling pushes back tactical. Yep, uh, they're looking to end the series here, Freak. This should be, okay, Jinx Rocket. You always got to keep in mind, Jinx Rocket can steal from 2.5K. And there are plenty of bodies around him. Oh, oh, no! oh, down to 150. That was pretty close. That was a nice attempt by Tactical. One minute also on Cloud Soul. So Cloud9, they can finish going for this one. A nice dive in the back line. Goodbye to Jinx already. As Gordon Day was what? done. And he's going to die as well. Cloud Soul not required. An easy double kill on the duo lane. And this 
is over. Cloud9 looking at 27 minutes now on to the Nexus Turrets. The Flash 2 not going to land in the Jensen. A bit much for Vulcan, but don't worry, he's tanky. Shotgun pulls back. Fudge could be the target. Turrets are on. Stun's going to land. They will find this kill in a Fudge, but be careful. Zombie Scion is a danger. Hogan at least dropped as well, and Zombie Scion's hitting the Nexus. So can they stop him? It's a 3v3 right now. Vulcan's out of mana. Alvar in the backland. Perk's trying to run away. Ash still alive. Can Ven end the game? <laughs> and yes, he can! Cloud9 takes down Team Liquid, three to one. Freak, this was such a fast series. Cloud9 just slamming Team Liquid in three of four games. Yes, Team Liquid won both regular season games. Yes, Team Liquid in the lock-in tournament took the series three to two.